Today we're covering 1 Samuel chapters 4 through 8. And Israel lost its battle against the Philistines because the Ark of the Covenant was no longer, it no longer represented the presence of God to the Israelites. They put God in a box and they used the Ark like a lucky rabbit's foot. So Israel lost their reverence for God and the priests carrying the Ark were ungodly men. The people followed the routine, but their hearts were not in the prayers and their worship and following after God to live holy lives was no longer a, something they did. We can also lose that close relationship with Jesus and lose the anointing and fall into ruin if we are not seeking closer heart-to-heart -heart understanding of Jesus every day. Just like a hot air balloon without the fire and the passion to know Jesus, we immediately begin to descend. The glory departs from Israel and the ark is taken by the Philistines. The Philistines worship Dagon, which was half man, half fish, their god of agriculture. When they placed the Ark of the Covenant next to Dagon, the Dagon fell face down before the Ark. The second time, its head and hands were broken off, indicating it was powerless. Disease spread everywhere they placed the Ark in the different cities. Bubonic plague spread by mice, indicating that their god of agriculture could not actually protect them. After seven months, they returned the Ark to the Israelites in an ox cart. When the Hebrew men found the Ark, and removed the mercy seat to look inside, they were struck dead. Over 50,000 of them were struck dead, actually. Only the high priest could apply its sacrificial blood to the mercy seat to protect the people from judgment and wrath, from disobeying the law of God. And that was stored inside the ark. In Hosea 4, 6, it says, My people perish for lack of knowledge. And that's God's people. So, also in 2 Timothy 2, 15, it says, Study to show yourselves approved. A worker with no need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. True believers cannot practice sin, sin and live without experiencing God's judgment and consequences of giving the enemy a foothold, which then becomes a stronghold and then deceives us. Without God's mercy and Jesus' redemptive blood, there is judgment. In chapter 7, the ark was placed in the home of Abinadab. His name means father of a vow, and it remained there for 20 years. Samuel then compelled the people to return to the Lord wholeheartedly, and then they were able to de defeat the Philistines. Samuel set a stone between Mizpah and Shen and named it Ebenezer, which means stone of help. And we all need our Ebenezers. We need to remember. For Israel, they needed to remember, and it's also a reminder to their enemy. So we need these Ebenezers in our life, the times that God has worked in our life and the, the things he's done for us to remember to build our faith stronger. In chapter eight, Samuel appoints his sons, Joel and Abiah. Joel means Jehovah is God, and his brother's name means Jehovah is father. They had the right names, but the wrong character. Elders feared the leadership of the ungodly sons and asked for a king, and Moses had predicted this would happen back in uh, Deuteronomy 17, verses 14 and 15. So what we think is a good solution is not always God's plan. Abraham thought Hagar was a good idea, but it resulted in ongoing war and conflict to this day. Samson thought Delilah was a good idea, and he lost his anointing. David thought Bathsheba was a good idea, and it led to a family conflict and murder and loss of his family. So what we think might be a small compromise or a shortcut can actually lead to heartache for the rest of our lives. It's much easier to stay close to the heart of Jesus and obey. In Matthew 7, 24 and 25, Jesus said, So everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the winds, floods and torrents came and the winds blew and slammed against the house, yet it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. So follow Jesus and continue to be blessed. Bye-bye.